The Amazing Mr. Malone. Operator. Operator, get me the office of John J. Malone. We now present The Amazing Mr. Malone. An exciting half hour of mystery and suspense, starring John Saul as the lawyer, whose practice before every type of bar has become a legend. A locale is the city of New York. The time, the present. And the hero of these weekly adventures, the amazing Mr. Malone. the name, John J. Malone, attorney and counselor at law. And one of the things this business has made me is an expert on cliches. Take the one that goes, money never made anyone happy. Well, Joe Norman would get a big laugh out of that. Mr. Norman is the sleek-looking gent gliding down the corridor of the Wainwright building. He's known around New York as a sharpshooter who'll do anything for a buck. And so great is his rush to make one this morning that when he comes to a door marked Walter Blake Investments, he doesn't even stop to knock, but enters without an invitation. Hiya, Miss Blake. Who's that? Joe Norman. I told you on the phone I'd be right over. Yeah, but I don't remember you knocking, Norman. Huh. It's customary, you know. Now, suppose you try it again. Oh, you're kidding. Am I? Well, if it makes you happy. No, from the outside. Oh, will you cut the comment? I said from the outside, Norman. Okay. Who's there? Joe Norman. Oh, come in. That's much better. Yeah. You're probably wondering why I did that. Well, I just wanted you to know I allow no familiarity from people I employ or I'm about to employ. Is that understood? Uh, yeah. Sit down. You said something on the phone about the, well, about a proposition that might interest me. Mm-hmm. Uh, what would it be worth to you if I got Paul Manfred out of your hair? What makes you think it'd be worth anything? Well, you Manfred and dude Kendall run practically the whole town. So? So, I figured uh, if I could get Manfred out of the way, you'd have a clear field. Yeah, you admit there are three of us. What about dude Kendall? Maybe it could even be arranged for dude to uh, take the rap. Mm-hmm, go on. Well, I think I can lead Manfred into a trap. How? Uh, you won't go anywhere without a bodyguard? He would. If I promised him a shot at you. What do you mean, Norman? Suppose I phoned him and said that I was setting up a trap for you. Only when he gets there, we spring it on him. That's the idea. What do you think? Ah, it might work. Of course it will. Is it worth uh, 10000 to you? Five. Oh, come on, Blake. I'm taking quite a chance here. Five thousand, Norman, and not a penny more. Well, if that's the best you can do. That's the best I can do. Okay. I'll phone Manfred and set it up. Hello? Mr. Manfred? Yes? Joe Norman here. I was just up to see our friend, Mr. Blake. How did you make out? He went for it hook, line, a sicker. What did you tell him? That's what we agreed on. That we would ambush you and see dude Kendall got the credit. That's very nice, Norman. <laughs> Satisfied? Not quite. What's the matter now? You're not exactly what I would call a trustworthy type, Norman. How can I assure myself I won't be double-crossed? You've got my word, Mr. Manfred. That's why I asked the question. Well, Blake promised me 15 grand for the job. Yes. You promised me 20? No, I promised you 10. Well, I thought it would be worth an extra 10 to you for the insurance angle. That way, you know you can depend on me. <laughs> You'd sell out your own mother, wouldn't you, Norman? Oh, well, the price would have to be right, but that's beside the point. What about Blake? Deliver him at the stipulated place. Won't have to stipulate the time. But we won't quarrel about your fee. Oh. <laughs> 
just a second. Where in the money? The sky is sunny. We got a lot of things in that. Yes? Uh, Mr. Blake in. Who's calling? If you don't mind, I'd rather not leave my name. It's a little idiosyncrasy of mine. Well, I'm sorry. My husband isn't here. Oh, that's funny. I was supposed to pick him up at 8.30. Uh, what do you think could have happened? Oh, Barbara. Oh, hiya, Mr. Blake. The message was just saying you were out. Oh, is that so? Well, darling, I, I didn't know you were expecting company. Didn't you? I thought I mentioned it at dinner. I must have forgotten. You know, Barbara, if there's one thing I can't tolerate, it's an interfering... Oh, I... I'm sure I won't have cause to remind you again. Will I, dear? No. Mr. Blade, you'll oblige me, Norman, by minding your own business. Well, you got me wrong, friend. I was just thinking you might want to save your strength. We've got a long ride ahead of us, and I wouldn't want to see you knock yourself out on her. Shall we go? How much further is it, Norman? About a quarter of a mile up the road. You know where the Phoenix Bridge is? Yeah. Well, it's just this side of it. What time will man be get there? Ten thirty. I uh, I thought I'd give you plenty of time to look around. Well, that was why. I told you I'd take care of everything. Have you figured out yet how Dude Kendall is going to get the credits? Yeah. You know the dude has everything he wears custom tailored. Well. Well, I scouted around and found out who makes his gloves. Huh. I thought it might be a nice touch if they discovered one right next to Manfred's body. Have you got it? Yeah, right here. It's a little gray suede number. Must have cost him at least 40 or 50 bucks for the pair. How did you get it? You know me. I got connections everywhere. You, uh, you better slow down. Uh-huh. We there? Uh-huh. See those bushes? Yeah. Well, uh, park your car in there so it won't be, won't be spotted from the road. How's this? Fine. Hey, will you listen to those frogs? They bother you? No. We all got a croak sometime or other. <laughs> Very funny. Hmm, I guess not. Suppose we get out and uh, stretch. Wait till I make sure I've got my gun. Don't bother, Mr. Blake. Manfred. May I suggest you take no man's advice? Get out and stretch. You dirty little double cutter! I am see it from my side, Mr. Blake. A guy's got to look out for himself. And he made the best offer. Yes, you can't blame him, Blake. The Normans are very mercenary, fellow. And now, if you'll forgive me for rushing you... No, man, Blake! <coughs> I, uh... Yes, that does it. Perhaps you got Dude Cantle's block? Yeah. Suppose we drop it right over here. Mm-hmm. Well, that takes care of Mr. Kendall. That takes care of Mr. Kendall. Now, suppose you take care of me. You're leaving yourself right open there, Norman. No. I'm talking about the 20 grand you promised me. I was referring to something else. I know, but you forget it, Manfred. Why? It sounds like a wonderful idea. I hate loose ends. So do I. That's why I left a letter with a friend of mine addressed to the district attorney's office. I'm not back by 12 o'clock. He's going to mail it. I'm sorry. Uh, I underestimated you. You'll get your money tonight. Three hours later, the police discovered the body of Walter Blake on the small dirt road 12 miles out of New York. But the first I knew of it was the following morning when I was awakened out of a deep sleep. Through half-closed eyes, I peered at the alarm clock. It was 5 a.m., there was no good reason why I couldn't turn around and grab another couple of hours of shut-eye. No good reason. Except two fellas with two awfully big guns, and they had them aimed right between my eyes. And morning, Counselor. Hey, Terry, he's awake. Yes, I see. Well, will you get a load of those pajamas? He looks like he's sleeping in a rain bottle. Yeah, I bet he dreams in Technicolor. No, 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 don't tell me. You boys are Abbott and Costello, huh? That's good. All right, Malone, get dressed. What for? We're going places. Not me. I say you are. A friend of ours wants to see it. Yeah, what's the name of this friend? You'll find out soon enough. Well, let him phone my office for an appointment. Now, if you'll be good enough to leave without slamming the door, I'll go back to where I was. I said, get up! 
I wouldn't do that again, mister. Then don't give me any cause to. Hand him his pants, Terry. Yeah. <coughs> hmm. They could, uh, they could stand a pressing, huh? Give me a towel, Terry. Okay. Yep. What's the idea of tearing it? We're going to blindfold you. You mean you woke me up at five o'clock to take one of those cigarette tests? Why, this guy really cooks with gas. Oh, you'll have to forgive me, girls. I'm not at my best at this hour. Why, you grab him, Terry. Yeah. Come on, my own behind. Come on, let's come here for you. Okay. Yeah. Oh, call his arms behind yeah, him. I got him. Oh. Uh, what was the big idea, Malone? Oh, nothing. I generally start my day with setting up exercises. That's yeah. funny. So do I. Oh, oh. If there's one thing I can't stand, it's a play. Oh. I ought to break your neck for this, Ben. I tried to be nice, though. That's Terry. Yeah, he just wouldn't listen to it. Give him another drink. Oh. Come on, pal. This is good for what ails you. Oh, let me alone. I'm sorry, Malone. Huh? Believe me, I wouldn't have had this happen for the world. You... who... Oh, ah, dude Candle, isn't it? That's right. Were these two punks working for you, yes, huh? Yes, but uh, they were overzealous. Well, somebody's going to pay for this. Don't worry, they will. Ah, oh, don't... Shut I... up! I wanted to talk to you, Malone. You could have come to my office. No, 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 not very well. The police are looking for me. Walter Blake was murdered last night. Blake? Yes, I want you to represent me. Well, that's very flattering, dude, but I'm not interested. I didn't kill him, Malone. Then who did? I have no idea. Well, why did the police nominate you for the honor? I didn't wait to inquire. <sighs> All right, dude. You mean you're going to handle my case? On one condition. You give yourself up. Oh, no. Then it's no dice. Now, wait a minute, Malone. I'll tell you what I'll do. Scout around for a while, see what you can find. I'll give you Ben's phone number. Call him at noon. And supposing I haven't learned anything by then? I'll still surrender to the cops. Well, why not do it now? Because I believe in hunches. And I got one that says you will have this all cleaned up in no time. And if I don't? I've never welched yet on a bet. If you don't, I'll pay off just the same. And now, back to the amazing Mr. Malone. Yes? Mrs. Blake? What do you want? My name is John J. Malone. I hate to bother you now, but it's extremely important. I've got nothing to say. Oh, I'm not a reporter, Mrs. Blake. I'm an attorney. I still have nothing to say. Well, can't I come in for a few minutes? No, I'm going out. Well, uh, maybe I can give you a lift. No, thanks. I'll manage. I doubt it, Mrs. Blake. You're the careless type. What do you mean? Your purse is open. Oh. Yeah, that's an ugly-looking gun you got there. What did you intend doing with it? That's none of your business. It couldn't be. You have an idea who murdered your husband, and uh, you were going to take the law into your own hands, oh, was it? Give me back that purse. Sure. As soon as I remove that. I want that gun, Malone. Now, first, listen to me. I want that gun. I'll give it back to you if you answer a couple of questions. You're wasting your time. Well, what do you got to lose? Sixty seconds, more or less, won't make any difference. Look, I'm working for a man named Dude Kendall. You know him? Supposing I do. Was he the one who picked up your husband last night? No. Who was it? Man I never saw before. What did he look like? Why should I tell you? Well, it's obvious you don't know his name. Maybe if I had a description, I could help you out, huh? Well, he was slim, about five feet eight. He was obviously proud of his hair. He kept patting it down in plates. Mm, that could fit a million people. Wasn't there anything different about him? No. Come on, Mrs. Blake. Think. Well... It seemed to me that the little finger on his right hand was stiff. Sounds like Joe Norman. Norman? Obviously, it registers. No. No, I was thinking of someone else. You're lying, sweetheart. I tell you, his name wasn't Norman. Now, may I have my gun? If you don't mind, Mrs. Blake, I think I'll keep it for a little while. You promised me... I guess I can't be trusted. 
Oh, that's all right, Mr. Malone. I can always get another. You'll be making a big mistake. Then I wouldn't hang around here if I were you. You may have to pay for it. Hiya, Malone. Can I sit down? I wish you would, Norman. I understand you've been looking for me. Ever since one this afternoon. What did I do to wait three and a half hours of your time? I wanted to talk to you about Mrs. Blake. Mrs. Blake? Yeah, she's awfully peeved at you for walking up with her husband last night. And I thought I might be doing her a favor. Then you were the man, Will you huh? stop acting like Mr. District Attorney? Sure, I was the guy. I admit it. I picked up Blake at 8.30 and left it a half hour later. You're lying. Well, just between us boys, I am, but you never could prove it. Hmm. What are you up to, Norman? I just want you to realize that I can be a valuable man to you. You think so? I know so. You're representing Dude Kendall, aren't you? Well? Well, um, would it be worth 25 grand a dude for me to save his hide? How do you propose to do that? Well, suppose I got up on the stand and told a story how I arranged a meeting between Walter Blake and Paul Manfred for last night. Who? Manfred. Go on. Naturally, I didn't know what Manfred had in mind. He told me he wanted to see Blake on a business deal. You can't imagine how surprised I was when the fireworks started. Mm. You'd better come with me, Norman. Back to your age, Malone. I was just supposing. Get smart and I'll deny the whole thing. Mm, but you're willing to tell that story for 25000 huh? What do you say? I have to talk to my client. Yeah, you talk to him, Malone, but tell dude it's much more important for me to talk. And I'm not opening my mouth until I see that dough on the line. Hello. Let me talk to Dude Kendall, please. Oh. Dude Kendall. You got a wrong number, mister. Now, this is John J. Malone. Oh. Hold on a second. It's the great mouthpiece. I'll take it. Hello. Dude? Yes? I want you to meet me at my office in an hour. What for? So I can turn you over to the police. Are you out of your mind? Don't you get it? I can clear you of Blake's murder. You know who did it? Yeah. Who? I'll tell you when I see you. You gonna play ball? Well, this is against my better judgment, Malone, but I'll be there. Yeah, come in. Good morning, Lieutenant. Oh, I knew this was going to be one of those days. What are you doing at headquarters, Malone? Well, if I'm not wanted, I'm... You're not. All right, dude, let's go. And make sure you close... Dude... You got Dude Kendall there? Yes. Malone, I love you. Come in, gentlemen. <laughs> ah, have a seat. Thanks. And uh, to what do I owe this unexpected pleasure? Don't look at me, Lieutenant. It was all Malone's idea. Well, thank you, Mr. Malone. That's all right, Brooks. My client and I are always happy to cooperate with the police. So you're representing him? That's right. As of when? Five o'clock this morning. Didn't you know we were looking for him? Don't blame Malone, Lieutenant. He wanted me to give myself up then, but I couldn't see it. And what made you change your mind? He claims he knows who gunned Walter Blake last night. Yeah, so do we. You mean Kendall here? That's exactly who I mean. <laughs> You're crazy, Lieutenant. That was the work of Paul Manfred. Uh, Mr. Manfred, huh? Yes, if you pick up Joe Norman, you can sweat the whole story out of him. I got a suspicion that Manfred paid Norman to lead Blake into a trap. And Manfred killed him? Yeah. Why? For the same motive you're ascribing to my client. Manfred was one of the three biggies in this town. If he killed Blake and hung it on Dude's door, that would make him number one. <laughs> He's probably laughing up his sleeve right now. I doubt it, Malone. Well, why don't you pick him up? We have. What did he have to say for himself, huh? Nothing. If you give me five minutes alone with him, Lieutenant... I can guarantee you results. That's just the trouble, dude. I think you already had your five minutes alone with him. All right, Lieutenant, let's have it. Manfred's dead, Malone. Dead? Yeah. D-E-A-D, -E as in murdered. And... And you think dude... Had... I think dude killed them both. That's why I'm so grateful to you for bringing him right to my door. I don't see how I could have managed without you. 
that's Malone for you, the helpful type. How many other lawyers would do for their clients what I did? Not only did I deliver mine to the police, but I even strapped him into the chair. And while Lieutenant Brooks beamed on me as though I was his favorite child, dude got out of his chair and started for me, and the light in his eyes wasn't gratitude. I'll fix you for this, Malone. I'll fix you for the last thing I do. No, no, no. Take it easy, dude. Believe me, I had no idea. You had no idea, you dirty double-crasher. That'll do. Go on, Lieutenant. Tell him I knew nothing about Manfred's murder when I brought him down here. You think I'd believe him? I know how close you two are. Don't talk like a chump. Lieutenant... What makes you think dude here killed Manfred? The same kind of logic that tells me he killed Blake. And suppose I could prove he didn't kill Blake. How? I couldn't have. I wasn't even in town all night. That's a lie. One of my men saw you at the club 91 around 8 o'clock. How does he know it was dude? Those clothes he wears give him away. He was a symphony in brown, they tell me. Yeah? Were you a 91 dude? Well, yes, but I went straight home from there. Yeah. Does that... Does this belong to you? Where'd you get that glove? Then it is yours. Well, I... Don't try to kid us. We got the man who made it. Where did you find it, Lieutenant? About eight feet away from Walter Blake's body. What? It's a frame. Don't make me laugh. I'll prove it. You claim one of your men saw him dressed to kill last night? Dressed to kill is right. And he was wearing brown? So? So a fashion plate like the dude here would never wear gray gloves with a brown outfit. That's right. Yeah, crazy, Malone. You expect to secure an acquittal on such flimsy evidence? Why not? You're using the same evidence to convict him. Oh, well, that's different. Anyway, why couldn't he wear gray gloves with a brown outfit? Why? You can't have it both ways, Lieutenant. If your man spotted dude because of the outfit he was wearing, you can't in the next breath argue his clothes don't mean anything. Okay, Malone, stop selling, I'll buy it. You got anything else to peddle? Well, I there. I'd like to tout you on a shabby piece of merchandise named Joe Norman. You think he killed Manfred? Oh, I'll leave that to you. All I know is that Norman offered to sell Manfred down the river when he talked to me a couple of hours ago. And what's that supposed to mean? Either Norman is as brave as a lion, or he knew Manfred was in no position to hurt him. I'll let you take your choice. Yeah. Good evening, Mr. Norman. Who the devil are you? Don't tell me I changed that much in 24 hours. Oh, oh, sure. You're Mrs. Blake? Come in. Thank you. You know, a girl like you shouldn't wear black. It don't do a thing for you. I believe I had you to thank for that. I don't follow you, honey. You led my husband into a trap last night. You're nuts. You may be right, Mr. Norman. I won't argue the point. D- uh, now, 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 put that gun away, baby. You don't know how easy those things go on. Don't I? Hey, what goes on here? Hey, will you look at that? It's Joe Norman, isn't it? Yeah, get out of the way, dude. You better let me have that gun, Mrs. Blake. Sure. I won't need it anymore. All right, Norman, get up. What? Yeah, she's a lousy shot. I'll have to take her down to the pistol range and see if she gets some practice. Come on, Norman. Quit taking. <laughs> Let me alone. Give me back that gun. Whoa, sweetheart, whoa. We only allow one chance to a customer. Am I next? Take it easy, dude. The law gets first crack. All right, Norman. Where were you at 4.30 this afternoon when Manfred got himself bumped? I don't remember. Oh, that's good. That's very good. Yeah, well, where were you, Mrs. Blake? Battle to Norman. Well, you're not pinning this on me. She had the best motive in the world to kill Manfred. Why? He murdered her husband. And how would you know that? I was there. Ask Malone. I told him how it happened. I thought it was a, was a business deal. I'll bet. you got to believe me, Lieutenant. I didn't even know Manfred was dead. Didn't you tell me you'd be willing to testify against him? Sure. I wasn't worried. I knew they'd get a conviction and put him away. But you don't remember what you were doing when Manfred was killed. Well, uh, give me a little time to think. Uh, suppose someone threw that question at you. I'd answer I was with Malone at his office. Wait, I got it. Yeah, I was in Charlie's. You can ask Gene Rogers. He was with me. You're lying, Norman. You couldn't have been. Can you prove that, Malone? Positively. Then he killed Manfred. Oh, I didn't say that. I just said he wasn't at Charlie's. As far as Mr. Manfred's murder is concerned, we've got Dude to thank for that. What are you babbling about? No, 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 there's no reason to be angry, Dude. 
A clothes-conscious boy like you will love it at Sing Sing. Wait till you see the styles they're showing. Striped pants with a slip down the side. They tell me the effect you get is positively electrifying. Hey, Malone. Huh? Tell me something. Anything, Lieutenant. Well, I can see why dude knocked off Manfred. That made him the number one boy in town. Yes, he figured that it was safe enough when I phoned and told him I could clear him of Blake's murder. That gave him the green light, huh? Yeah, and he almost made it. He figured when we found he wasn't guilty of Blake's murder, we'd also believe him innocent of Manfred's, because both of them seemed tied up. And what convinced you otherwise? Norman's alibi. But you said he was lying. You claim Norman wasn't that Charlie's. No, he wasn't. He was at the Hawk Club with me. The what? Sure, he was so rattled he forgot it. <laughs> and if Norman was with you... Then dude couldn't possibly be. <laughs> That'll learn you. Yeah, it certainly will, Lieutenant. Well, now, what are you so down in the mouth about? You did all right. Did I? I wish you'd show me where. First of all, I find my own client guilty, and if that's not enough, I wind up across the table looking at you. And what's wrong with that? Oh, the same thing that's wrong with living at the YMCA. What? No girls. Good night, Lieutenant. Once again, back to the amazing Mr. Malone. Pick me up at my office at this time next week, and I'll unfold another of my grisly stories. Till then, good night. The Amazing Mr. Malone is a Grace Gibson radio production starring John Saul as John J. Malone and directed by Lawrence H. Cecil.